Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's the it's first, first of the month. month. Look at the checks and come on. on. You don't know about that, right? You know. I wake up that. and I see that my sister was already dressed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> that was my God, jam. that was a good song. I don't care what nobody said. Don't that care what nobody said. Ain't too many came back with us. Straight up, you know, ain't too us. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Niggas that love the bus. 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 I see. Welcome to another episode of Under Construction. It is the first in the month. I am Kaiser Soul Say yeah, yeah. to the right of me, the angry, sleepy, tired <laughs> black up? fan, What's up, Jamal Charlotte? Darby, and to the left of me, um, Rodney Richie Rich Richardson. Both of them recovering from the very last, well, not the very last, but still tonight is the last, the, the last CIAA. For now. For now. Uh, be back in three years. I, I think it'll come back. We'll see how when when they get to Baltimore and people start dying in the streets. I'm kidding, y'all. Damn, man. I know, I'm kidding. But I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Baltimore. They don't even say the I. It's Baltimore. 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 Hey, yep. True story. I talked to somebody who was in town from Baltimore yesterday. I say, hey man, y'all having the next hit, and they was like, no, we ain't, cause we ain't going. They <laughs> 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 from Baltimore. <laughs> like, wow. Wouldn't that be funny if everyone just came out to Charlotte anyway? <laughs> just anyway, just cause nobody goes to the games. <laughs> we can come up with a cultural event. In place of yeah. Places. By the way, uh, congratulations to Winston State. Yeah, Winston, uh, Winston Salem. Salem State yes, University yes, for winning the tournament. Yes, yes, CIAA champions. So, yes, uh, yes, yes. yeah, that's Stephen A. Smith's alma mater. He made a big fuss about it on Twitter. Pop. Preposterous. Preposterous. Did anybody see what his stats were when he played for them? Nah. I wonder if he could beat Le- LeVar Ball. <laughs> I, I think I, I could it. beat LeVar Ball. LeVar's kind of big, man. He is kind of big. He, he, got, like, he, got like, he might be able to back Stephen A down. Yeah, the whole game. Though. Yeah. I, Come on, man. <laughs> let's make that happen, guys. Uh, in professional sports news, <laughs> in though. In real sports news. Yeah, we're going yeah, to <laughs> actual people who played the game. Uh, actually, one of them is not playing the game right now. Let's let's get this this out the way and talk about yeah, uh, man. Hornets' up-and-coming young star, because he was on his way to being that over the last month, Malik Monk, uh, an indefinite suspension for Bad violating timing, the NBA's drug policy. Now, real quick on that, nobody knows the details. Except the league and the Charlotte Hornets, and no one is going to release the details except for the league. Right. Uh, according to the someone last, the uh, yeah, or someone who can. But even the stuff I've heard, this leak is so unreliable. Right. Um, right. And apparently, the penalty for leaking stuff is is big. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the the collective bargaining agreement says that teams will not release details uh, concerning violations of the drug policy. The league will. And look, if you look back at the history of people of suspensions and bans the nba is super vague unless it's a ped right. violation or weed or weed yeah. which which uh, you can pretty much smoke weed about four or five times before the nba says yeah, okay says, hey okay, man, that's right. enough, man yeah right. so all right man yeah or he ate a whole pack of gummies. A whole pack of gummies. <laughs> <laughs> had to, yeah. He's back in the league. Now. So I, that that leads us to believe that this suspension is not marijuana or PED related. Uh, mm. It is likely to be what the NBA considers to be a drug of abuse. And considering mm. that he is not banned from the league, that leads us to believe that possibly he was in the anti-drug program before, before right. either voluntarily or, you know, the, either the, the team decided he should be there and then he either refused a drug test, failed a drug test, or came forward, you know, and yes. said that he had another violation. This is all speculation, by the way, but this is right. based on information that we ascertained from reading the last collective bargaining Cause, agreement. Because there are so many theories. So many, yeah. So many just <laughs> crazy <laughs> stories floating out here, man. And To be honest, man, I... I Basketball doesn't matter at this point. If, if you allow an addiction to mess up money, a, a money, <laughs> a million dollars essentially, then there's something serious going on. So I, I'm I'm more concerned about his health and his well being. Right. And hopefully, this is why vets matter in the NBA. If you have vets on the team, like a team full of young guys, is not going to cut it. If you have vets on the team that that can put their their, their arms around him. Maybe they can steer him in a different direction. Um, I just hope the Hornets stick by him through, during this process and and just, just kind of hash things out because seeing people on drugs before uh, in, my, in my life, it's it's, it's kind of devastating. 
And so I, I, I just want him to be well physically and mentally. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm with you, man. I, I echo the same sentiments, man. Um, the, I, I guess the one thing that concerns me about the Malik Monk situation, I told you guys, um, I, I reported like last month that inside that locker room, you have young guys who look up to Malik yep. Monk. Mm-hmm. And we have, a, we have a franchise that is desperately, it's an ongoing process trying to change the culture in yep. that locker room. Uh, uh, with this franchise, and not only am I, I'm, I'm obviously concerned for Malik Monk himself. But let's be clear about that. I don't want to, I want to make that very clear. But it's also just a, a concern over the franchise as a whole, man. Yeah. Because this is a big deal. This is a big deal with, with one of your young guns who is up and coming, who who seems like he is turning the corner, who who seems like he's finally getting it. It's coming together, and now you have this, yeah. and it, it's it's. I'm not going to call it a black eye because we don't know what's going to eventually come from this. Mm-hmm. We don't know how what, what, what's going to finalize from this situation. But it, it's not a good look, man. And and I'm with Rodney. It, basketball hardly matters at this point. He's got to get himself right. From what I did read about the, the entire program, he's basically got to check in with the consultant, doctor, whatever you want to – whatever title you want to throw out there to make sure he's good, to make sure that whatever is – Whatever demon he has, whatever addiction he has, is it, slowly going to fade away or is gone. So he needs to take as much time as he needs, man. And, and, and what was reported is that that may take months, that may take a year. Mm-hmm. However it, long it takes, he needs to and, do it, and man. Then, and then you go back and look at Rick Bunnell's article. It states pretty much that from 18 to 19, he went from Arkansas to Kentucky to Charlotte. Right. And that's a lot on that's, that's, that's a lot, that's a lot on the plate for a nineteen year old. Imagine us as nineteen year olds, and somebody says, "Hey, man, you got two million dollars." Million not, yeah. never had nothing. <laughs> so now, also the um, the program for drugs of abuse. Mm-hmm. If a player voluntarily enters that program, there's no punishment. They're still allowed to play. There's yeah. no suspension. Right. So that's another thing that leads me to believe that this was voluntary. voluntary. If 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 he had failed to test. You know, just outright. Right. Um, they would. It would, it would have he been a the ban. OG Mayo exactly. Yeah, so right, this right. leads me to believe that he recognized, or you know, someone on the team recognized the issue, and they entered him into this program. The way I feel about the situation is is double edged. Mm-hmm. I have act, I've had members of my family literally die, die from drug from drug use. use. Yeah. I understand how that cycle goes and how someone can get sucked into it. And especially someone as young as Malik Monk, right. you take youth and money, and money and then you inject drugs into the right. I- equation. Not a good look. Especially when you come from humble beginnings. Yeah, exactly. That, that's very key to this. When you come from having nothing and you have a whole bunch yep. of something. That and especially you, if man. you take a guy like Monk seems like he's kind of a flat, the flashy, cool guy. Right, right, right. The front going the yeah, guy. exactly. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, and despite that, he's not getting any playing time. The horn, He's on a losing team. You know, he's trying to trying to break through. The stress is going to get to you. Yeah. However. Yeah. Got to be accountable. You Still. have to be accountable. Got to be accountable. Because Malik Monk is not the only player in the NBA to minutes. ever go through that. To so not right. half minutes or be young and have a lot of money. Right. And Certainly not. we've seen other players go down this rabbit hole of self-destruction. We see it all the time. We hear accounts of players that got in bad and didn't know how to manage their money, yeah. got in bad with drugs and crime and the wrong people. And the wrong people. Leeches. Those, those things happen. Yeah. And to be fair to Monk, there was there is a lack of veteran presence on the team. I, and it's not surprising that this happened after Marvin, Marvin Williams, Williams MKG left. left. Yeah. yeah. So uh, but having said and that, we're going to talk about veteran presence and in, in, in culture later. Yeah, in the NBA. I, yeah, I, I just think that having a veteran presence in the locker room might go a long way. And I'm, I'm I gotta wonder what the rest of the team is thinking. Right. Um, right. You, you know what I, I I hope comes from all this because when you talk about drug abuse, what's not mentioned enough is just overall mental health, which yeah. I think yes, is just, uh, yes. It, they go hand in hand. You know what I mean? And and, and I hope whatever comes from this process. He tackles that. I, I hope whoever he's working with, they, they kind of work with him on that aspect of it because I think if you master that, then you can start mastering addiction. So yeah. ho- hopefully he's 
He he takes as long as he needs to to, to master both, man, to, to overcome both. I should say. Yes. Yeah, so oh, hopefully this ends in a, in a positive note, and he's he's a multi-time oh, yeah. All Star. Right, right. And stays in Charlotte. Right. He finally, well, well. He, really, he finally wants to stay here and realizes <laughs> that we have his back. Yeah. Well, th- and this is this is where we're gonna really see Borrego's value. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It. I, I don't think it has as so much to do with the X's and O's. As stuff like this, right. people forget, especially for young guys like Malik, who are used to coaches essentially being father figures. Yeah, Borrego's gonna have to play that role it, here, which is not common in the NBA. Not no. at you know what all. I mean? In no. the NBA, it's just like you do your job or you don't. We don't. We're not especially here to like you from and be the, your friend, right? From the Popovich coaching tree, right. where Pop is not known to coddle players. Not at Look right. at the Kawhi right. Leonard situation. He was like, if you don't want to play for us. Go, go. go right. So, um, which is stupid. This right? is gonna be, yeah, man. That didn't turn out too well. But um, <laughs> you know, this is this is gonna be a very interesting situation for James Borrego and the Hornets. And let's say the suspension ends, then what do you do? Do you just throw him back out there? Well, and- let, let me let me also say this: not just James Borrego, but I think for the entire franchise, man, I, I really do, man. And y'all y'all know I I hate to make. Uh, I hate to make Michael the the show pony in his words for the franchise and every little thing that goes on with the franchise. However, in this situation, I think Monk and MJ have a, a really good relationship and a special relationship, and, and I hope that translate into them showing that you know we are here for you, man. We do support you, right. and we do want you to move on from this, man. So I think it's on the entire franchise can wrap their arms around Malik. And, and hopefully, hopefully, Monk's family. Uh, if they're not already in Charlotte, yeah, you, you need you might to come wanna, here. You might want to come, yeah. come over here and wrap your arms around him or bring him back out to Arkansas yeah. a little away from, from the, the environment that he needs to be away from. Yep. Wrap your arms around him and, 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 and just pray for him and so so he can hopefully yeah. get better. Man. It's definitely beyond basketball, man. Absolutely. So we, uh, we didn't sorely miss Malik Monk's presence. We probably could have used it last night, but the Hornets went 2-0. This past week, hey, with, with the upcoming hey. game tonight against the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm. Um, yeah, I know. But uh, <laughs> we, we forgot to do predictions last week. But uh, they they beat the Knicks 107 101. Um, and then they beat Toronto. They continued their dominance of the Toronto yeah, Raptors. Guys, we, somehow. Actually, we actually we actually we actually compete with the Raptors. <laughs> yep. Go uh, figure. 96 99, in which Terry Rozier won his first ever game in Toronto. In Toronto. Uh, and really? boy, they, yeah. yeah, he mentioned he, he it last it night the on the broadcast. Um, and awesome. He yeah, said he never won a never won a game in Toronto. Yeah, that yeah, I thought it's that was kind of odd. And uh, but he came up big last night. Also, Miles Bridges continued his solid play. Man, I don't man, think man. I I think he got over whatever wall we thought he hit right before the All Star break. Right. Um, he's beyond that. He's been playing really solid and aggressively of well. So let's talk about those two two games. First of all, we kind of all figured we beat the Knicks. Um, Thank God for the Knicks, man. Although Bobby Portis, man, his I, he, Bob, he, what? Look, if, if he played against us 55 to 60 games a year, <laughs> he would be a legit MVP candidate. Yeah, oh, yeah. And making oh, max yeah. salary. Like, you know what? He owns us. I, I'm going to say this one more time. Thank God for the Knicks. And and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why. I, I'm looking at Bobby Portis' stats. 8 for 11, 17 points. Why? Why did, why did it go from where? Well, thank you. <laughs> he was like hitting. I'm like, man, like, and he does up. this every time he plays us. So, it, it, thank God Chicago, for the Knicks, man. Washington, yeah. New York. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get that. Uh, Terry Rozier led all scores with 26 points. Big game from him. I'm, I'm sick of the Terry Rozier argument. No, it's, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Something else big. Welcome back, Devontae. Welcome, yeah, back, Devontae. welcome back, Devontae. Actually, yeah, Devontae. Glad to Graham have you had back, a huge sir. Game. Uh, Maybe uh, Borrego was on something when he sat him against uh, what's this, uh, San Antonio. San Antonio. A game we were clearly not going to win Antonio. anyway. It was, uh, I'm sorry. It was um, Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Oof. A game we clearly were not going to win anyway. So, so Luke's first start. And why is Cody Zeller not playing? <laughs> uh, you know what? I think Borrego. Yeah, youth movement. Well, B- Biyama's not a youth, though. Borrego is very matchup oriented. Mm-hmm. Right. If he feels like Zeller's not going to match up well, with what Toronto or New York does, then he's not going to play him. He, well, I think he felt like an inside presence, a, a, a more defensive inside presence, would make a difference in those two games, considering look who we had to go up against, Bobby Portis and then Pascal Siakam. Yeah. And then look at Sia, Sia, Siakam, Siakam, did, Siakam did really not, didn't play that didn't well last night. Well. He yeah. didn't shoot the ball um, well. Because it, he was kind of bothered by the physicality of Biombo right. underneath. So right. for 23. 
Yeah. On the floor. And 39%. Before the before the, the, the second half, he was like two for 13 yeah. or something like that. Right, so, right, right, you know, right. he had to come alive when, you know, Toronto made that big Miles, run at the end. Miles, PJ, and, and, and Biz really closed off that paint for him and made everything hard for, 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 for Pascal. Yeah. So, Zach Lowe. <laughs> had ten things that he liked. I saw that. Yeah. And the Charlotte Hornets number seven. And, and there's a yeah. Charlotte Hornets player who made that list. Yeah. Who would have guessed it is Cody Martin Cody who would have made that list? Martin. Who? Who is Cody Martin, guys? A second round pick. A second round. No, guys, no, no, no. Guys, he, he didn't get drafted. Yeah, guys, come on, man. You know that we have to lose every game and pick. And if you're not in the top three, <laughs> you just trade you. For, no, for, <laughs> for, 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 forget, forget just picking the right guy where you're at. Just, yeah, oh no, you yeah, got to no, no, tank no, 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 no. and get just the top three. Get the top three pick. However, yeah. I, I I bring that up because specifically in the in the New York game, um, we we know Cody Martin is not the best shooter. He's no. not gonna be, he's not there yet. But every time this guy comes in the game. You notice there is an immediate defense, especially energy. Okay. Uh, immediate difference, especially yeah. on defense. The impact, the defensive pressure they were putting on the Raptors. Yes, especially in the corners where the Raptors shoot a lot shoot of threes. all the threes. Yep. Man, they were getting. They were just. They were clearly frustrating Kyle Lowry, which I love. I love because that part. I, I'm not he a Kyle frustrates Lowry me fan. anytime. Yes. Every time he plays. Yeah, don't shoot me. I actually like Kyle. Lowry. Man, come on, man. He's so, that, man. He's so scrappy and, and gangster and, and nah. aggravating. He's and... a slightly more likable Chris Paul. Wow, but not as good. Wow, yeah, I'm weird. I love Chris Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Chris Paul went from North Carolina, I'd be on that guy all the time. <laughs> but, but he's from North Carolina, he's from North Carolina so I just so kind of ignore. Respect him. Yeah. That's it. That's but, it. Uh, <laughs> but Kyle Lowry, he cried every time the every whistle time. blew. It was just get. I was hoping somebody on our team would just get in his face about it. But. So Cody Martin had four rebounds and six assists. That, that's, that's he does all the the, the all little the, things, the dirty things, the, the little things. He's he's a a much much cheaper Michael K. Gilchrist. He yes. really really is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and that's a good. That's actually a good thing. I say that in a, in a good way. Um, but Borrego mentioned after that next game, he, he, he basically said, "When Cody Martin learns how to shoot, man, he's yeah, gonna have a spot in this league does, for a long yeah. time, man." It's coming. And he, and you know what I noticed ever since we got. Killed by the Pacers. I noticed like late in that game, Borrego was going with McDaniels and both yeah. Martin mm-hmm. twins. But it was causing like hell hell defensively for the other team, man. I think we we, we saw that the last if, couple if, of games, if man. Their offensive game can catch up with that defensive Oh, game, definitely. We have something cooking. Well, yeah, uh, I, you know, you. you guys know how much I hate plus minus. Yeah. I think it's just it's a almost <laughs> worth it's, it's worthless. <laughs> However, However, in last night's game, it is important to note all of the starters were <laughs> neg- negative plus <laughs> minus, all of the bench plus positive. 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 Jalen McDaniels was plus 18. That's y'all. crazy, man. That one block he had on that three point attempt. Yeah, I, I it thought was he got like, a shot. He's just like a, a bird, like, ela- like, like no. elastic man. Like, like wow. <laughs> like, we have an athlete here. All right, so let me ask you guys this Have we found our core? We're one one or two pieces away. We're one or two pieces away. We we, we uh, a big man maybe a center. Big, we there still needs to be an infusion of just. So is talent. that piece we, coming from the draft? Probably not. To me. I don't know, man. I don't. I, it's just tough because to we we talked about this if, before. If, 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 if we if we could get like a a legit two guard. Hit, well, you know what. It's not coming from this upcoming draft because I just don't see that game changer in this draft. I really don't. I tell you, I, Anthony I, I, Edwards is that game changer. But we're probably not going to draft Anthony Edwards. I don't see that happening, man. I think James Wiseman will be the pick if he's available. In fact, I'm, I'm going to make a bold statement. All right, you got a hot take coming? I don't know if it's a hot take, but I think if 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 we have a top five pick mm-hmm. and Wiseman's not there, we trade the pick. Mm. I think we need to explore all options, man. Really we have do. To re- it, it, it's best player available. Because think about, I mean, cause if you had a top five pick, you could go to, like, Washington and be like, hey, Bradley Bill don't want to play for y'all. Right. Not in this draft, man. I'm telling you. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Draft, Washington man. Mike would take a top five pick to dump off a player who they're going to have to pay next year, but, who the Hornets will have money to pay. Who he doesn't want. You know what? Th- think but, but, of, think, but, but, think but, but, I'm just saying, think about this lineup. Devontae Graham, Bradley Bill, 
No, I'm with you. But there's one thing to that. Ooh, I, we got to attach something. No, 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 no. There's one thing to that, Kaiser. I'm with you, but there's one thing that that, that, that angers the hell out of me. <laughs> Why the hell couldn't that happen last year? <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No comment. Flexibility, man. I Flexibility. Think, we'll, we'll have options. Uh, Let's well, just leave cap, it at that. well, cap space. I mean, and, and, and you know, space. everyone's like, I don't know what the Hornets going to do with all extra cap space. These are the kind of deals you These can make. These are the kind of deals you when can make. Cap space. Space. Right. And then, like, the, if, 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 if a team is trying to sign somebody big in the 2021 offseason, right. you know, we got $30 million in cap space. Right. Oh, you, you need to dump two pretty good players? Ain't you gonna give us the first round pick? Those are the deals you do. Dude, you can yep. make guys flexibility. I don't is know. Key. I, I, I really like this core. In the the two big uh, issues, I'm not even sure if they're issues, but they're, their concerns is the five. Yeah. And the two. And the wing. Yep. Uh, because I'm gonna say the, the three. Well, the, the well, three. I, I, you know, a because lot of. I, 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 to but, be honest with you, long term, I don't know if Miles is that three. You I, can't, you can't sit Miles Bridges on the bench. No, you you're, you're not going to sit him. My, on the bench. my thing, if he continues to hit threes, I'm fine with him at three, man. Exactly, I don't have yeah. a problem with him at three, man. If he, and we, we've seen players kind of develop their game outside of what it is is expected yeah, of them. Little crossover the other night, I was like, but where did uh, that come from? I'm glad you brought that up because look at Miles from one from year one to year two and tell me he hasn't added stuff to oh, his yeah, game in, in that yeah. short in that little bit of time. So I, I like the little rotation with him and PJ. I, I, the, you know, there was a concern because well, they're essentially the same type of player. Not really, not really no. And that's but, not even the worst thing to me, honestly. Adds versatility, in my opinion. It does. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it really does. I think the Rosier. Graham, Graham is situation to look at. Right. is more of yeah. a concern because yeah. you can't bench either of those guys. Really, right. you can't. Right. But but if you could get Bradley Bill, I take Bradley Bill over either of those guys. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. You know, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> you know, <Trade> <laughs> so as Brandon, some, you run the point. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon, you 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 back in the line, right? So yeah, and that's another thing. Dwayne Bacon. We haven't even talked about Dwayne Bacon. It's, you know. I, uh, I think he's going. I think the writing's on the wall with Dwayne Bacon, man. Yeah, he, I really do. This is his last year. That deal. What happened? What happened? It's it, he works hard. I, I, I know I, he I does. Know. That's why he got the starting position uh, in the off season. We were all high on him. We seen what he does in the G League. God, if he if, 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 no, if he was in the G League, I, I'm, I'm a, I, <laughs> I'll say this. I, I've seen throughout this league before, and, and so and you know it doesn't make sense to the outsiders looking in, man. I think sometimes you just have coaches who don't like a certain player for a certain reason, and we can't explain it. We don't it's, know why. He, to to me, sometimes it's his effort on the defensive end, and I think and there, he doesn't, there he doesn't might finish be a, at the basket. But there might also be a little bit of immaturity as well, possibly. I I'm speculating. You, 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 I don't are you, know. Are you talking Twitter? No, no. no. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> I look at some of them tweets. I'm just like, man, wh- where's your head really at, man? You know what I mean? So I think sometimes the shots just aren't falling, and and he fell into this bad situation where he got injured. The shots weren't falling, and he got yeah. injured. Yeah. Devontae Graham steps up, and it's like, whoa, wow, okay, he's really good, right? And, and you're just not gonna give. The starting spot back to a guy whose shots weren't falling when you got a guy leading the league in three point percent. So, so here's a question, and I, and I think this is actually a good problem that Borrego has because mm-hmm. do you give him the same leeway? Do you give him the same leash that you gave Malik Monk? Malik, Malik Monk, Monk, had Malik Monk is a first round pick. I, true, and but Malik, Malik Monk has a higher ceiling than yeah. he does. Does he really though? Does he, really? he does, man. I, I'm, I'm telling athletically, you. he. I, I, if, if, yeah. if, if, if Malik Monk's three started falling consistently, we couldn't stop. Him. Yeah, but Malik Monk's never been a a great three point shooter. In, Wait, in three then, seasons, he's never shot but, but league then, average. But, but if you look at Malik, Malik was just turned 22. Bacon's about to turn 25. Oh wow. That's a that's key. That's key. Yeah, yeah, but it's not like Bacon's got like a bunch of road wear on him. True. They're still he's still young. But again, it brings you back to this. It's a good problem to have. You know what oh, I mean? Absolutely. H- however, but with with Bacon's deal about to be up, man, it's just possible he won't be back. And it might just be as simple as that, man. And we and we're really back to square one as far as trying to find the two without Malik Monk and without Bacon. So <laughs> that's gonna be a tough Whew. road, man. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I like our young core. I'm a roll with him. I, I'm excited to see what break. I, 
if, if you really look, I think the development plan is working. Shout out to Caleb Martin too, man. Who yeah, yeah absolutely. Man. We, yeah. we haven't mentioned him enough. Yeah, uh, that the 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 kids are gonna be all right. Yeah, I no, think. I believe that. I believe that. We, we, I'm, I'm I'm excited to see the center rotation. I'm right. I'm excited that the Hornets finally have a program where yes. they are developing the talent exactly, that they did draft. And, and you draft uh, according to that program. That's right. always been the biggest problem with the Hornets is that they've never had a system that they drafted into. Right. I understand you always want to draft BPA, but. At the same time, you got to draft players that fit your system. That's that's why when you when you look at teams like San Antonio, San Antonio, it wasn't that they lucked up into Kawhi Leonard. Oh no 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 no! They looked at that guy and said, "He fits our he fits, he fits, he fits our what system." We do here. And, yeah. and then we we have the confidence we can develop him to the player that we need. Absolutely, Greg, Greg Popovich. I heard Popovich say this before. He said, "When you do that, you take away a lot of the guesswork because when you start overthinking and you start yeah. overguessing, mm-hmm. you know what happens." So. Yep. And it's happened with the Hornets or Bobcats plenty of times, man. So I like where we're going now. Hey man, I was looking at the box score, man. The sexiest thing I've seen. Pause. Nick Batum. <laughs> Zero minutes. Did not play. DNP. <laughs> man, that is that is. That's man, awesome. Since since, man, since, since, since since Paris, man, that's a beautiful thing. Also, man. everyone's like, why don't we just buy out Batum's contract? No, you no, know no, how no, no, expensive no, no, that no, is. No. That's very expensive. Just no. it's gonna fall off just after just next chill. season. We'll probably be able to. To dump it all after next season. Uh, after this season, some team's gonna want an expiring contract. Yep. And um, let's, he's just no, taking just, up a roster spot. Y'all just chill so, out, man. Yeah, just, it's coming. Just, out, it's coming. just be patient. It's coming. Independence Day is coming. <laughs> all right. So um, who's gonna throw the party? Before you see us again, the Hornets play Milwaukee today at Ooh. one p.m. Ooh, we are an hour from from when we we're filming this. Uh, then San Antonio. Oh boy. Then Denver. Mm. Then the um, Rockets. And then Houston. Oh boy. Oh and four. Uh those are all home <laughs> games, by the way. Oh that, and four. That's not a selling point. It's not a selling point. We, we're better on the road. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we don't have a crowd at home. We only beat the Knicks at home, it seems like. I think we, we get the Spurs. I think we get the Spurs. It's I tell you, possible. I tell possible. you why. Borrego really gets up for those Spurs games. And we played them close the last time we played them. We ended except up losing. For one quarter. Except well, that yeah, quarter. but that one quarter. But that's a mistake that they learn from. Yeah. They say, okay, we played, we outplayed the Spurs for, you know, thirty six minutes. All we had to do was do it for another twelve. Right. They're gonna fix whatever that other twelve is. And Borrego love, you know, he he loves beating pop. Yeah. He loves yeah, yeah. playing. Absolutely. Yeah. I think Absolutely. that's the one that they get. I think they get destroyed by Milwaukee. They play Denver close and lose. Um, Houston, and then James Houston, Harden puts up sixty on us because. But you know Onyx, what? You uh, know what? You know what? You know a terrible strip club. <laughs> Here's the I'm thing about bad, man. man. It's pretty good. It's all right. Here's yeah. the thing about the Rockets. I've seen man. worse. <laughs> it's not a James Harden strip club. We'll James just, we'll, yeah, we'll just put it like that. Yeah. Thing about the Rockets, man. We are actually sneak sneakily. I don't know. I don't even know. If we that's match word. up. We 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 kind of compete with the Rockets when we play them, man. We never beat them. But we well, compete with them. Because they don't have a center. Yeah, well, true. Yeah. So, we don't have uh, a good center. Hey, man, Cody Zeller is probably like Giannis to the Rockets. <laughs> who going to stop Cody Zeller? <laughs> PJ. Who, who's he going to stop? <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No matter. No, no matter. Actually, I'd like to see Cody come back as a backup next season. Yeah. I don't think I don't he will. I don't, I don't think he it. will. I think a team will overpay him. Yeah. And no, no, he, he's, 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 he's on the roster again after this year. So yeah, one more year. Yeah, he's, well, he's with, got one more year. That's he's right, with he Batum. Right. But I, I say I'm going one and three next week, man. I, I say all four. I'm all, I, I say we surprise we we either get the Nuggets or the Spurs. And you, okay, you yeah, got all four. Yep. What you got? I'm one and three. I I'm think we get San Antonio. Um, I think today is going to be ugly. And then, <laughs> yo, the Bucks are coming off beating the OKC Thunder by 46. Hey, man, the Bucks. Too Lord, hey man. man. We not Woo! talk. We don't talk about them enough. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why is that? Why because is that? because Milwaukee is not a sexy place like Los Angeles or or, or, or New Boston York. or yeah. Man, uh, they I'm, need to let go of that, bro. I, yeah, I'd be scared of Milwaukee in the play. And plus, well, that's another thing. They kind of fall apart in the playoffs. With which that, that, that that's, that's yeah that's, that's the key. They got to prove it man, in the playoffs. Let me tell you man. something, man. Chris Middleton is. Ball. He's balling, man. He's he's a Carolina guy. He's from Charleston, so that's 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 what's up. All right, real quick, we're gonna do this real quick for our commercial break. I'm gonna give you guys some facts. In 2011, 2012, two teams in the NBA 
Okay. Toronto Raptors, Philadelphia 76ers. Mm-hmm. Toronto Raptors <laughs> had a worse record than the Philadelphia 76ers at that point. Mm-hmm. They took two different paths to rebuilding their team. One worked. We know the 76ers decided to trust the process. They, of course, they never came out and said that they tanked because the NBA doesn't allow that. But we know what the process is. Right. In the next five years, they got eight first round draft picks. Eight first round draft picks. Mm. Four of them were top Three. Wow. Four wow. top three draft picks in five years. Wow. There are reports now that Joel Embiid wants out. If he were to leave, that would leave them with Ben Simmons. That's all they would have to show for five years of tanking, eight first round draft picks, four top three. Yeah, two number one picks. By the way, Toronto won the championship last year, so that's, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Just throw that out there. there. <laughs> they didn't tank. You want to know the interesting, interesting fact? No one on the, the Raptors roster last year was a lottery pick. No one. So what? Basically, <laughs> so what y'all are saying is tanking. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I, I'm just. I, I'm not even making an implication. No, no, no. I'm so, just giving facts. So, uh, so what y'all are saying is sometimes you just you got to pick the right guy regardless of where you're where picking. You picking. Is that? Is, it's a crazy concept. Wow, what a crazy oh concept! Gosh. Wow. So you don't have to lose games to pick the right guy. Sometimes is that what you're saying? Am I, is that what I'm hearing? Who was the last number one pick besides LeBron James who won a chip? Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. Who before him? Holy crap. Hakeem Olajuwon? Maybe. Yeah. No, it wasn't Hakeem. Yes, it was Hakeem. Sam Bowie was first in that draft. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Sam Bowie, Hakeem. No, 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 no. Hakeem, Sam Bowie. Bowie, Mike. Yeah, you're right. So you're right. right. I'm sorry. It was so Hakeem. Since, my, my since 1984, right. 80, 84, you got one. there have been three number one no, well, Shaq. 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 There have been four number one picks that wanted. But only, only two have won it with the team they were drafted with. Ooh, Tim Duncan wow. and Akeem Olajuwon. Wow. Besides, what? well, LeBron yeah. did too. Well, yes, well, but he had to leave, he had to leave and, and come back. Right, right. That's uh, that's it's not good. Well, those pesky facts, boy. Man, man, that's crazy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> those can't miss prospects at number one. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, James Wiseman, gonna take us to the promised land, y'all. <laughs> Moving Jay's Wiseman. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Don't win for Wiseman. Panthers talk. <laughs> and we're back. Back on under construction. We're going to talk a little bit about the Carolina Panthers, particularly about everyone's favorite or not favorite Carolina Panther, <laughs> Cam Newton, who was spotted last night at the Grizzly Lakers game. That was random. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. He went to Memphis. He knows yeah. Memphis. Is? Random. I don't That's know. That's random. Okay. I, but... Yeah. I don't know. I guess. I guess he didn't want to go to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, shout out to uh, who's that? Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe. In the Panthers. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, hey, group. Who actually in, in the Panthers group. group? Yeah. Who went to? Bra- he braved. Uh, the crowd in Toronto to go to the Hornets. He made Raptors it on TV. Game. He was on TV. Uh, was cheering very loudly. Shout out to him. Shout out to Mike Roll. But uh, Cam Newton did not go that game. Um, and news has come out. It just the Carolina Panthers, if you looked up wishy-washy in the dictionary, <laughs> you would probably find See, David Tepper of Tepper with his arm around Matt Rule because they, now they've decided that they want Cam Newton. We're going to – we just want a little commitment. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they seem to be all in on Cam Newton now. Uh, amid, re- amid reports that his surgery was 100% successful. Apparently, they placed some kind of um, like webbing under Cam's foot. Uh, so he's like a cyborg now. That's what I mean. <laughs> and, uh, they say it, it doesn't require screws. And uh, uh, it was done by a, a surgeon in Charlotte, from Charlotte, a well respected surgeon who's All done right. the surgery before. All right. So I guess based on that report, um, the team's like, okay, yeah, we're all in on Cam Newton now. So, if you're Cam Newton, now Cam Newton has stated, even as recently as a few days ago, that he wants to be a Panther. We've he hasn't. I'll say this about Cam, he has not changed his stance One on bit. whether or not he wants to be a Panther. And yeah. I understand players. We heard that with Kemba, and players say that. But Cam has been kind of vehement about it. Like, look, guys, I'm a Carolina Panther. And y'all going to have to drag me out of here if y'all want me out of here. He's pretty adamant about it. Whereas the Panthers themselves have been like, ah, well. We'll we'll see. I'm not uh, a doctor. You know, (laughs) I'm not a surgeon. We'll see. 
I would love to have him, but you know, look, man. Your thoughts? <laughs> I the one my my first thought is is how much this could really blow up in the face of the organization if somehow, some way, Cam Newton is not a Carolina Panther next year. <laughs> there are so many ways this could blow up. But the, but the first thought of of how it could really blow up is just uh, from an integrity and a trust standpoint. Mm-hmm. Like, look, man, everybody knows the NFL is a business at the end mm-hmm. of the day. It stands for not for long. What have you done for me lately? All that stuff. We all know that is true. However, man, this situation is so different because you're talking about an MVP caliber quarterback. You are talking about a coach who publicly stated in a press conference, I would love to have Cam Newton here. Mm-hmm. Okay? So with all that, and, and then you change your tune after being so wishy-washy because one week you're like, well, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. And then you come out the very next week and say, Cam Newton's our guy. <laughs> yeah. So so if this so if this if, if if it comes out where Cam Newton doesn't try himself on the field next season, that's a red what's my saying, y'all? Optics matter. That's, optics that's matter. really bad optics if Cam Newton at this point it's not a Carolina Panther. Hey, we'll talk season. about this a little bit later in a bit. But isn't it funny how last see, how last year David Tepper was the toast of the town? Yeah, <laughs> everyone loved what Ooh. David Tepper was doing. Hey, he should buy the Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> we'll talk about this more later. But okay, so I see this as Matt Rule cleaning up Tepper's mess because honestly, if you wanted to trade Cam. Telling me that I'm not a doctor is, is not a good look. Optics, the, the optics are not good Mm-mm. because you're not giving him a, a, a vote of confidence that he's healthy for the other teams and markets. Right. David Tepper and the Panthers need to handle this a little bit better. You think? If, 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 if you want to get rid of Cam, be be be, be transparent. Transparent. He he made he made the Panthers relevant. If you remember the Panthers before Cam, no, compared no. to Cam so, so, now, so what you're saying is he deserves a little more respect. He deserves. Look, you gave Ron Rivera a a love affair farewell concert <laughs> job interview, right? You made nice with Olsen, and then he kind of shitted on you later, and which was understandable. Which is understandable. And if you want to get rid of Cam, I mean, this is it's not a good look for as far as vets. Like, I, I heard Trey Boston on the radio. He's a free agent, by the way. And then you have an open invitation to the show if you would like to come on and, and, Very and chop it up. Do, man. Um, he basically said that the veterans are looking to to, to, to to see the direction of the team. Like, what are you going to do with Cam? Like, that's going to make a decision whether some vets resign it's or not. A, it's a domino effect. It's a domino man, because effect. Because these veterans want to make sure that they're not wasting their time. They they right, want to play yeah. to win, man. And, 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 and they know Cam Newton is it, the, winner. the most important piece to, to that puzzle. And, and, and then push come to shove. They don't realize, like, Cam Newton is a very, very popular figure in the NFL. How you treat He's Cam Newton. He's also a popular figure in that locker room. Yep. And, and how you treat him goes a long way. To, to, to the narrative that, that 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 you pay to the rest of the league. So tread lightly, Mr. Tepper. Please tread lightly. So there also there a report came out from Ian Rappaport that other teams don't really believe the Carolina Panthers when they say they're all in on Cam Newton. And the belief is get this. The Carolina Panthers are going to pick up a QB in free agency and they are targeting Oh my God. Don't even say it. I gotta me, say Oh it. my goodness. Let Ryan me put my head tap. Tannehill. Hey, l- l- let me tell you something right now. Tyrone <laughs> Kirk. Rodney Richardson. Let me tell y'all something right now. If Jesus. September seventh, eighth rolls around here and Ryan Tannehill runs his ass on that field. Y'all have bail money ready for me, man. No, I'm, not, I'm with you. I, I'm with you. Have some bail money we ready for me. We, we all go, under destruction. will be broadcasting <laughs> from, from, from Mecklenburg CMPD. County. Yeah, right down, <laughs> right down the street. Yeah, right down the street from Make America. That can't happen, man. You want to talk about optics? Oh my God, Lord have mercy. It's it's it, it's comical because Ryan Tannehill, after a career rejuvenating year, is going to want more than what Cam Newton is making. But see, here's the thing. We don't man. have the cap money. 
I, I, I just don't well, get what this is. They do, for. but it, you you don't want to. We only have thirty million. You want to hamstring your franchise? Look, I mean, he's Brian. not gonna make thirty million dollars, but no, no, he, he better, better not make thirty million dollars. Yeah, yeah, but you got you got, you got James, James Bradbury out here looking for fifteen a year. I don't think the horn the Hornets the Panthers will resign James That's Bradbury, stupid. which yeah, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ryan, I don't know how much stock to put into a report like that. Um. I, you know what? When you, when you started, we started talking about this. You, you, we need to. I, I hate to say this, but I don't you need to consider the source. That's true. Yeah. Ian Rappaport has <laughs> reported some, has made some erroneous. Reports Plus, we've heard all Panthers. kinds of ridiculous things about the Cam Newton saga right. in yeah. the last few months. Yeah, and none of them have really come to fruition, fruition at all. Uh, I think that Cam Newton will be the starter. Week one, he I, he I know, he will man. be on the shortest leash he's ever been on in his career. I, I, I believe know. that part. Now that part, I really do believe. I, I I don't know, man. He can't listen. If he comes out and looks like he did the first two games of last year, we, by he's gone, man. It's and, it's it, it, that that's a tragedy. I mean, tra- travesty because this guy's a former MVP coming off of injury. You let him work his way back in, and are you really trying to win? The Panthers need to be trying to win. I'm they, now. I'm sorry, you can't. They don't have the luxury that the Hornets have in that the NBA doesn't have parity. Right, right. You can kind of rebuild and rebuild and rebuild into the NBA until you luck up and get that superstar. But the NFL has such parity that there's no. You can you you should feel like your team can be competitive anytime, and, and you don't go I'm from. To be honest with you, man, there's a reason why he signed that seven year deal. I really think they're gonna. I, the changes we're going to see in the next few months are going to be oh, no, that, hey, that, disgusting. That, that, letter, disgusting. that letter said it all. No, that letter said it all. I, I agree, man. But, that was very telling. Um, I don't know if... It, it was soft. Uh, also, yeah. also, consider the organization that Tepper comes from. When was the last time Pittsburgh had to rebuild? Never. Never. Right. Never. They've never had to... They never went through. If they if they were just bad, they were just bad. bad it wasn't yeah. being bad on purpose. It, exactly. Right. So they've essentially had the same coach and staff for the last decade. decade plus, and before that, they had Bill Cower for right. decades plus, and they, they won a Super Bowl then too. Right, they had one eight and eight season, and then they won a Super Bowl. Yep. So that's a lot different than what we're going through here in Carolina, and I don't, I don't know if that is the route that we should take. That that we should take. If if we should though, the question is, of course, it, it, I mean, it all starts and ends with Cam Newton. Yeah. Who do you trot out there? If you tried out anybody but Cam Newton, then then essentially you're saying the rebuild is on. It is on because there's no choice. No, yeah. What, what other choice do you have? Nobody on the <laughs> roster is is as good as Cam Newton. Nobody in this draft is going to be as good. Yeah. Will Thrill Green? Oh, stop it, man! Just stop. He's a it. Charlotte kid, man. Please, please, you might as well try Kaiser out there, hey, man. Please. Actually, yeah, I could. Yeah, I play mad. <laughs> <laughs> I can read a defense. You can read a defense, read defense, man. Yeah, read defense. Read defense, like. <laughs> Hey man, how come, like, quick, how, hey, how come the arrows ain't coming up? On <laughs> what route y'all running? Who is B? Who's C? <laughs> Who's the hot route? Receiver? Who's the hot route? <laughs> Where's the safety yeah. line up at? Uh, all right. Uh, however, there are a few bright spots on the Panthers roster, particularly CMC and our number one receiver, DJ Moore, who had sure is more? well, according, according to, to some people, according to the greatest Carolina Panther of all time, uh, Steve. <laughs> Smith. That's a, this is hilarious. He said <laughs> that DJ Moore number two. was a number two guy. I agree. Time out. Let me get this straight. Is he is he saying he's a number two on any team or number two on this team? A number two. Period. A, a, a number two in the ideal situation. Well, okay. Uh, that that's that's. I don't know if if that's what he meant, but let's let's say that that's what he I, implied. That's, honestly, man. Honestly, I, if I'm a DB, he doesn't strike fair in me. A dude who can a thousand yard he doesn't receiver, strike fair a guy, me. a guy. I tell, tell you what, I tell, I I tell him. I tell you what. Any DB in DJ Moore in an open field on a slant route, you think they not gonna right. get juked out of their shoes? Let me shoes? say something, man. I saw DJ Moore get punked against the the, the Rams. The Rams won the best defense in the league. Come nah, on, man. they got man. some of the best corners in the league, man. Nah, Come on man. now, nah, man. Now, listen, man. I'm, I'm kind of torn on this topic because, on one hand, I'm just like he's clearly our number one, 
But on the other hand, it's just like if it's coming from Steve Smith, man, it's some validation. It's too. some validation to it. I, I, cause I don't, I, I'm not. I would if Steve Smith was sitting across from us. How am I going to argue with him on what would make a good? You know, I, 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 t- I tell you exactly why you can argue with him. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> going to argue with somebody. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly why you can argue Steve Smith on this point. Tell me what position Steve Smith played when he started with the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was, was, he, what, was he number one? Hey, he oh, no, no, no. Was he number two? No, no, no. no. Was he number three? No. no, 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 no. He wasn't even the number four receiver. <laughs> he was, was, the on, kick he kick was on special teams. Yes. He was very good at it. Yeah. But it wasn't until uh, an injury allowed him to insert himself as the number two receiver. receiver. He wasn't even number one. Mushin Muhammad hey, was. Hey, and hey, it wasn't until Muhammad hey. left that Steve Smith was the number one guy. So if I, in 2002, had gone to Steve Smith and been like, dude, you ain't a number one receiver. First of all, like, he would have right. punched me in the jaw. <laughs> he would have sent me right to the hospital. <laughs> you got money. And you know what? But you would have been in the hospital and been like, I'm right, though. But I'm you right, know, but, but, but here, here's the thing. I would have been wrong because clearly Steve Smith is a number one wide receiver in the NFL. He was. He I was, mean, right. if he had to develop into uh, No, no, no. Maybe, maybe that's maybe, the point. Maybe, but, yeah. but maybe that's the, the point. See, I, see, I, I, look, I, let, me, let me clear it up. I'm not saying that DJ Moore can't become a number one. He still has to develop to that point. He's not done yet. No. Steve Smith would have told you, though, that he was a number one buried on the bench. Here's the thing, y'all. Y'all, if y'all haven't noticed, Steve Smith has been pretty hard on DJ Moore yeah, this past season, that's man. True. And I think some of this stuff is to try to get DJ Moore into the player that he thinks he should be. Let me tell you something. DJ Moore is a millennial. That that Gen X shit does not work with him. <laughs> I agree with that. Okay, so also also consider this. I agree with that. Who has been throwing to DJ Moore? This first two seasons. Has he, he has never played a full Cam season. Cam a little bit. Yeah, Cam Kyle a little Allen. bit. Kyle Allen, Will Greer, uh, Taylor Heineke. Heineke, and that's it. It's, yeah. it's been... Oh, so hey, that sounds a lot like uh, uh, Steve, Steve Smith. Smith. <laughs> Who had a carousel of QB. Wow, so, so it's almost as if like if you don't have a really good quarterback. But maybe you're on to something, Kaiser. Maybe I, Steve Smith sees himself I, in these You know, more. okay, I kind of agree with that. If you look at how he interacted with him during the Amazon... Series, right. uh, he didn't look too amused. Uh, well, but but I, but I, Steve Smith doesn't seem like a coddler to me. He was not. He was I not. Think, I think that's yeah. Goes he was. He was not like that in the locker room. I think that's how. That's Steve, ultimately why he was in the Carolina. Why he didn't exactly, finish his career yeah. in the Carolina. Panthers. I think he feels like tough love is the way to go right. with these young guys, and it could be that he's doing that with DJ Moore. He's trying I, to put that chip on I his see, shoulder. I, I see that Steve Smith played with that chip for his entire season, and he feels like DJ Moore needs that fire. So if a guy who I think DJ Moore probably looks up to Steve Smith a little bit, mm. and if a guy you look up to says you ain't the number one, you're gonna be like, oh really? Oh, All right, right, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. See, I'm different. Like shit like that motivates me. These kids are like these. That's true. Babies That's true. No, yeah. but, but listen, they're different. No, no, no. Man. Listen, listen. Because I, I remember when, when they when they asked DJ more about Steve Smith's comments. Like his comment was something to the effect of like, "Well, I didn't listen to it, man. You know, I don't listen to that stuff. I just go out." It wasn't like that competitive response that you wanted. It wasn't like, "Oh, I'm gonna go show him I'm not." Like, it, was, like, it was like, uh, "I'm gonna just yeah. work hard and see what happens." Like <laughs> Kendrick Perkins and Kevin Durant. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right, right. Kendrick right, Perkins right. don't play no more, but Kevin Durant was like, "Hey, man, you you sucked on." the field and I'm, I'll bust your ass right now kind of thing. Right. You don't get that with DJ and, no, and, DJ and right. Smitty. It wasn't that, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that angry competitive response that I wanted out of DJ Moore. These kids are different, man. I'm no, I, you, I'm man. with you. I totally it's agree. So different, uh, I think that DJ Moore can be a number one whether he'd be the number one in an ideal situation, well, that's tough to say because in an ideal situation, you, you're number one's like Julio Jones or Antonio right. you, Brown you, or something like heard. that. Let me tell you what I heard. I was listening to the radio the other day. Somebody made a comment. I didn't agree with this at first, mm-hmm. but looking back, I do agree with it. What's that? Tyreek Hill is not really truly a number one. Um, in, in, in the classic sense of a number one, he's not a number one. Well, l- uh, let me let me explain. If, 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 if we tailor our offense with a good tight end, a couple solid guys who number twos. He could be like a Tyreek Hill. He'd be really good. I'm gonna tell you why I'm not gonna look at you crazy. Why? Why? For whoever said that, and, and he's you know, a former that, NFL player. No, but listen, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm. Th- th- that's not totally off base because if you look at Kansas City, they don't have a true number one, but they have everybody. Speed kills with the Chiefs. Yeah. 
anybody can kill you at any given time in that system, man. So I, I don't. That's Shout not out to crazy, the Clemson man. Tigers who won a championship with the Chiefs. It's three of you guys: oh, Bashad okay. Breeland, uh, Sammy Watkins, and Dorian O'Daniel. Are you done? Uh, we're champions. Okay, yeah, you go ahead. All right, cool. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> There's been talk that the Carolina Panthers are trying to shop around their draft pick to possibly move up for who knows who knows. I heard Joe Burrow, man, that's so stupid. Hey, that wouldn't surprise me. Although I would not be crazy about that pick. First of all, if you get Joe Burrow, then Cam Newton's leash is a shoestring at that yeah, point. Pretty much, he's probably um, gone if you get Joe. No, Burrow. No, I, I think. I think it, it's like a Brett Favre and Roger situation at that point. You, where, you, you want to hear an interesting stat? Hmm. The last, the last fifteen quarterbacks drafted number one in the NFL draft have won two Super Bowls. Do you know who won two Super Bowls? No, it's the same guy, Eli Man. Eli, Eli yeah. Man. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. But so let me tell you something That's about. Sad. So listen. <laughs> so we're picking seventh, right? Yeah. Okay. My first thought on this is if we're truly moving, if we're planning on moving up in the draft, there had there obviously, not to be captain obvious, but there obviously has to be somebody that the Panthers are looking at and say, you know what, this is our guy, but we don't believe he's gonna be there at seven. If they are truly thinking that way, I trust Herney. Because has Herney has Herney ever really missed on a first round pick? If he has, it no. hasn't been that often. That's true, yeah. Except for maybe Everett Brown. Other than that, no. Nah, I don't think he's missed too much, man. Right. I, I, we, we should stay where we're at, man. But, or, again, what if that guy is there? I, I, wouldn't know, I wouldn't be opposed to moving down. We need players. Actually, we yeah, need players. you know what, though? In the NFL, though, you're more likely to find your if, – if you got a top – 10 pick, you're more likely to find your guy, guy without trading up. Very rarely do you see teams with like a 7 pick trade up to like right. 3 or 4 because right. there's so many positions on on a team it's unlikely that another Somebody team wants is, the same guy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least in the top 10. Right. You know, so um, I don't, you know, I think this is one of those things where you know, jur- journalists mm. see the pan- man, the Panthers have a quarterback controversy and they got a high pick they, mm-hmm. they're probably looking to trade it and they generate uh, the bud, that, the bud. Yeah, right yeah yeah so uh, I think I think we do stay put I mean, we, 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 it, it, it makes more sense to me to trade down given the position that we're in we, we our defense is depleted to, to say the least, we have a whole bunch of people on the wrong side of thirty on that defensive end. That's right. Yeah, we side don't have our, our best defensive players right. gone. Right. We and don't so really have no, a. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to talk about and, that and too then much. Bradbury's right. probably gone too. And then so trade down for for more assets. You, eventually, you could probably pick up another second round or first round pick, and just move down that. It way. depends if there is a defensive end. And admittedly, I haven't really been up on college football this season. But if there's a defensive end that you feel like could be a game changer, I think you draft him. Um, else, yeah, yeah, then you do look at shopping the pit because that's that's the most impactful position on the defense. You yeah, could we, you could get you know uh, Derek Brown. That was my, that was my uh, first name. Okay, I was yeah, thinking. yeah. You guys but mentioned he's him up before. Draft board, so he might be out of range at this point. Yeah, I agree. And, and Isaiah Simmons, after he ran, I'm sorry, after he ran a four three. At 240 pounds. I tell you Woo! what, man. <laughs> I, and Clemson, he ran faster than wide receivers. Kaz, let me tell you this. His combine results are so good. Rick Bennell retweeted his. his wow. Combine. Yeah. And and actually had something positive to say. So. He, he's, 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 he's gone. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> you gone. put a performance like that. You, yeah. You, you're going you, to you shoot up the, the and, draft boards. And, and, and then one guy, man, who, who to me, it's, it's a controversial position, Jeff Okuda from 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 Ohio State. Yeah, that kid. I watched him against Clemson. Man, he shut down everybody he was against. Everybody, when asked if who who's the best DB he played against, it was this guy. I'm telling you, this guy. DBs typically be, don't get picked very high. I'm in saying, the draft, man, though. you got to be very DBs special. and wide receivers. Uh, I normally. think he's that special, but. But 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 to me, to, for a DB to be really good, you have to have a good D line to me. Yeah, and we don't have a good D line. Yeah, no. Yeah. Huh, it's ought to be ought to be interesting. Uh, we have an old defense. We also have an old stadium. And <laughs> David Tepper Damn you, man. has made it. <laughs> <laughs> David Tepper wants to roast us now. Yeah. So David Tepper <laughs> has been meeting with architects 
to talk about renovating to put a ceiling Bank of America Stadium. He wants to put a translucent no ceiling roof on it, similar to what the the Vikings have in Minnesota. Um, the cost for this would be astronomical. Tepper has already got 110 million from the city for Major League Soccer upgrades to the stadium. Um, this is gonna cost even more. Also, they've bought the 55 acre pipe and foundry site as an option for a new stadium. Guys, people who talk about moving the team to Fort Mill, you, you don't buy 55 acres downtown and then be like, okay, let's not let's put the state put the stadium. Right. Yeah. But this is this is my thing. Why why on God's green earth did you buy the pipe and foundry land and you're going to spend all this money to put a, 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 a translucent ceiling? Because <laughs> it's not your money. <laughs> why not? Why not milk? Why not? Because I, I, so here, stop bleeding us, so, David. So, so here's <laughs> here's the thing, and I don't I don't actually see it completely as bleeding. Tepper wants to make sure of one major thing: the city has to be. They got to have some skin in the game. They have to be fully invested into this because else he takes all the risk. Now we look at. David Tepper is the richest owner in the NFL, richest or second richest. And we say, well, psst, he can afford it. But the thing is, is if he ever decides to take his ball and go home, it's, then we're kind of screwed. We're screwed. So right? we we do need more skin in the game. He's, um, he's got all the leverage right and now. He, and yeah, and he has, he's even said publicly, this is a partnership. Yeah. So, however, having said that, Bank of America Stadium is the, the oldest stadium in the NFL now, almost one of the oldest. Damn, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but it's not like it's not dilapidated. Obsolete. It's not I, obsolete. It's, it's not like the Silverdome. I've been worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I think Tepper sees that and he's like, can I just make this better? And then because if if they do decide to build a new stadium, I mean that's what three four year project. I'm thinking like the Oakland Raiders Stadium is old. The, yeah, but they're they're moving, they're moving. to Vegas and they're they're, their new stadium and is the new stadium lit. Is about done. Yeah, oh, literally, literally, lit. Lit. yeah. Lit. Lit. Oh, I, I drove, drove by it. it. Yeah, lit, man. I was like, yo. <laughs> um, the Rams play at the Coliseum, but they're moving. They're moving. Damn, you right. Everybody else so has. The, uh, everyone else in our division has. No, the Saints got an old one. Yeah, but the Superdome's nice. Yeah, it is nice. And Tampa Bay Stadium. Yeah, Super Raymond James is real nice. Uh. Yeah, we, we, we Everybody done, has shiny new toys, and Except the rich the, guy doesn't have his shiny new toy yet. Yeah, so now that, he yeah. wants his shiny. Imagine you know being the, too, imagine really? being the richest guy in the NFL, and, and you don't have your young, exactly. Right. It's like, like woo, the poverty in you. <laughs> it's like it's like when all the rich guys go to like the Lamborghini meets, and everyone's got their Aventadors, and you roll up in your you Countach. It's like oh, it's Countach. It was nice. Oh, it's the 25th anniversary edition. Oh, oh that's, that's nice. Cute. That's, that's cute. That's nice. That's classic. Y'all, y'all, y'all been in that Atlanta stadium yet? I haven't been yet. Lord okay. have mercy, man, it's man. Like, I heard they got barber shops in there. You man, they, they got, got Waffle up. House. They got everything. Let me wow. tell you something. Let me tell you something. The concession stands. Like you get a hot dog for two, three dollars there, man. It's, you you, you can actually like yes, uh, and that was an it's, initiative that Arthur Blank had with the MLS team yep. is to have you know competitive, affordable, affordable pricing. And so, with, with that being said, but the thing is, Atlanta fans aren't going to the game. <laughs> I ain't mad at Tepper, man. I, I'm really not. I just wish he used some of his own money for it. But in the long run, man, it, if he wants to build us a shiny new toy, we ain't gonna act like we ain't gonna enjoy it if we go. You know what I mean? That's I, true. Right. So that's true. I mean, uh, we, we can't stop it anyway. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Also, uh, there's been this debate about whether or not football should be played in the elements. Now, me personally, I like, I, I I like football in the elements, I but do. but I like comfort too. I like comfort. Also, I would also like if a Super Bowl were to come here. If we were able to host a Super Bowl, and, it, and, and, it, and if it, you're not it, in a dome or a warm weather city, right, it's not, not happening. It's not coming, right. And then, and then also, it'd be nice to hold a Final Four. Yeah, Fi yeah, yeah. Well, Tepper sees the big picture here, y'all. Yeah. It'd be nice to hold more concerts in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, ladies, Beyonce might come. Uh, Elton John might come. Yeah, I'm okay. I, I'm okay on these things Tepper's doing. It's the the Cam Newton wishy washiness is like, like kind of that. I'm kind of like, dude, all right, dude, make a decision. So man, so the first game of the season last season, I somebody said, hey man, I got some tickets. You want to go? 
It was 94 degrees, was man. I said, man, nah, man, I'm, I think I'm staying. I'm good, the house. I'm good, bro. <laughs> hey, man, look, I, I, look, I like comfort when I watch a game, so I, I'm all for a ceiling or whatever you got to do, man. I'm Let me good. tell you, I, I went to a Jay Z Beyonce concert at the New Dome. It was in Atlanta. Mid- yes, okay. it was the summertime. And it was like 90 degrees outside. We had just stayed here. Chilly. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting back like, okay, yeah. it's comfortable. Oh, boy, that Atlanta State is pretty comfortable, boy. I mean, did, Ooh, man. Just imagine me going to, the, to that concert. They had it in Columbia outside. Oh, no. Ain't no way. <laughs> in that heat. Ain't no way, man. Ain't no way. Nah. <laughs> so, bring, yeah, I, 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 I think, I think the, the glass ceiling would look kind of cool, actually. I uh, just hope they put some tent on that thing, man. Some, it wouldn't man. need to be bait. I think, <laughs> does, I don't know if it closes or not. I don't want to open no, nah, I mean, yeah, there's some days where you will want it open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them October games. Yeah, no, nah, them, them 65 degree. Also, games, there's yeah, some mind course. games to play on a, on a hot day. Right, you right. could you could force the opposing team to wear dark uniforms. You come out in your whites, nice and cool. There you go. Other team, the defense gets worn down. There you go. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could do. A lot of strategies you could do here. I'm so. with it, man. You ain't so, gonna stop it anyway. Yeah, so. go for it. You gonna spend my tax money however you want to spend it. So, <laughs> so that's how I choose. So. Um, we're going to take a break here. We're going to come right back with our culture segment on construction. And we're back on construction. I'm Kaiser, Rodney, Jamal. Yeah, we're yeah. We're back talking about Charlotte sports and culture. And in our culture segment, we're going to talk about a historic legislation that happened during this past week. Um, Just came out the, of nowhere. Yeah, the House nowhere, decided <laughs> finally. After how many years? Almost 200 years <laughs> to make lynching a federal hate crime. Mm, mm, mm. It's about time. Now, here's the thing, though, because there's always a there's thing. There's always a thing. There's always a caveat. It was a near unanimous, unanimous vote. Who near voted against this? For all Republicans, by the way. I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm not saying anything about my political eff- affiliations because I don't really have one I but have one I just want to bring up that it was four Republicans uh, Ted Yoho of Florida Louis Gomer oh, Florida. Gomert oh, who, what a shot, what of a shot. Texas Thomas Massey of Kentucky and Justin Amash of Michigan who is actually independent he was previously a Republican Republican. he switched to independent so that uh, he could vote for impeaching the president uh, they all voted no citing government oh, overreach geez. Essentially, what they were saying is that a hate crime, a crime is a crime. If you add a hate, a racial component to a crime, uh, that shouldn't necessarily make it any worse than any other crime. <laughs> crimes happen. Hate crimes happen to everyone. It essentially is what, what, what they're saying. And shout out to the uh, 14 people that didn't vote. <laughs> Your silence is deafening. Your silence is deafening. <laughs> wow, man. So it's 14 to 4, essentially. 14 to 4, yeah. Wow. I'm, I, heard a, I heard a statement about this the other day. I might get shot for saying this, but uh, someone said if it was a uh, anti-lynching bill for dogs, it would have been oh, yeah, easily, completely yeah. <laughs> unanimous in the house. So and and, and and it took this long for you to even I want to I want to read a stat. I know okay. a stat you're about to read. This is from the UMKC uh, lynching statistics mm-hmm. from 1882 to 1968. So we're not even talking about the, the modern, last the modern day stuff. Last 50 years. We're going right. to talk from 1882 to, to 19. 19- 68 because that was probably the height especially during the civil rights movement right. where we saw a lot of lynching because there's a, there is a myth I want to dispel this myth that everybody gets lynched because okay white people do get lynched too in Mississippi we're going to start oh yeah we're going to start with the heavy hitters here Mississippi <laughs> from 1882 to 1968 had 581 total lynchings reported lynchings yes report right 42 of those were white people that means 500 39 black people were lynched hmm. in Mississippi. I don't even know where to go. With that this, is man. why there is a racial component to people that don't understand. That is why there is a racial component to this. You are far more likely to get lynched. If you are, if brown. you are, yeah, if you, you are, are a brown person. Yep. 
than if if you were not. That is why this is a hate crime. And like I said, this is only this is not even modern lynching statistics. There, which they exist, still exist. I, that's what I want to talk about because you know I, I I knew where you were going with this. And let me tell you something, man. Just when I was younger and my own ignorance. I used to hear people say, man, hey, man, you know, it's the 90s or it's the 2000s, and people in Mississippi are still getting lynched. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah whatever. Uh-huh. That don't happen now. Yeah. That was back in the day, man. No. Not it me. was. It, if you go to some towns, yeah. past sundown, and you're in, car, you're in the car with other people that you, they deem you should be in the car with, you, you, you're a deep doo-doo. Right. And, and this is important because I don't think people understand why... Uh, categorizing something as a hate crime is so important. It's very important. The penalties are a lot harsher. Which they should be. They should be. Yes. Because there are people out there people don't want to believe this, no matter what the crime is, that they feel like well, you know what? You're different than me. Yeah, it will will be worth it for me to to do the time or to hurt or, harm this person. Yes, or I could plead down I mean, there's a Mm -hmm. lot of different degrees of murder you could plead down to manslaughter with hate crimes, you can't do that. You can't, right. bro. It's a federal. That is a federal crime because you have violated someone's civil rights uh, by murdering them over uh, some some racial reason. And, and let me throw it. And, and I got to get this off my chest before we go on, man. But there are there are federal protections, um, you know, for LGBT, LGBTQ. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which you know they're they're categorized as federal hate crimes. So why not this man? I mean they exactly, they both yeah. deserve mm-hmm. the same protection, man. So and then people act like in 1998 that James Bird did not happen in Texas. In Texas, which in I Texas. Th- that just uh, I was aghast the fact that a a politician from Texas voted no. against this. Mm. And, Which in and, and, and that that was one of the cases that brought about the conversation about hey maybe we should make lynching a hate crime right and then and then in twenty fifteen in Charleston nine black people were specifically targeted because they were black at a mother Emanuel church I knew some of those people that were killed we had a guest on this show who was affected by right, that yep. also this isn't the first time the United States has tried to do an anti-lynching bill 1922, 1923, and 1924 um, it was passed by the House of Representatives majority an anti-lynching bill and was prevented from actually coming to a vote from from filibusters by the Southern Democratic bloc because at the time the Democrats were Southerners uh, unlike now where there was the the big switch back during the civil rights era but um so, you know, this has been recognized as an issue in the United States for forever, and we're just now getting around to it. So good on everyone who said, okay, you know what? Yeah, this should definitely be uh, a hate crime. About um, time. I, um, it took, I don't know why it took this long. Yeah, shout out I, to, I, I, to those, shout at to those who oppose this. Thought otherwise. Especially I, when you're from Texas who still have the death penalty in place. Yeah, I can't think of any rational reason. Day. You would vote against this. How is this? Gov- I don't understand how this is government overreach. Government overreach. I just don't. The logic behind that is states' ma- rights, man. Is maddening. Yeah, states', states rights. States' rights to lynch people is what. That's that's how it, it reads to me. That's how yeah. it comes off. Yeah, it's, because there's no government overreach going on anywhere else. No, of course not. Yeah, of course not. Of course not. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Let's move on. I'm sorry. All right. I don't want to piss our audience off. Let's uh, go on to our shout outs, shout outs. You go first, man. Um, I'm gonna shout out the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah, because this is a tumultuous time that they're going through, and they seem to be keeping it all together. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, they're they're in this weird state of pseudo rebuild. That this is a new regime. We forget this. It's just yeah. Mitch and Borrego's second year you're dealing with sending guys back and forth to the G League um, you're dealing with vets leaving you're dealing with one of your who you hope to be one of your premier players a, dealing with a drug issue a very young yes team. the statement that they came out I love that they said hey we're disappointed in the statement but we're gonna support him mm-hmm. as regardless, much regardless. as as we can right so stay with me here guys 
This is what good ownership is all about. Imagine this situation on the New York Knicks. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ima- imagine mercy. it. Mm. Or the Phoenix Suns. Oh, God. Or, or the, the Sacramento the Kings, Kings. Or the Minnesota Timberwolves. Or, or the, the, the other eight teams that are that have been worse than us statistically <laughs> in the last decade. Mm. But some for some reason. Oh, you this, never hear about them. Oh, you don't hear about them. This is what... This is how organization should be run. Okay. Now we'll see what shakes out out of all this at the end. Right. But for right now, I'm happy with the direction that the Hornets are taking. Could you imagine the fake Iron Fist James Dolan? Oh my would god. Raise the, man, oh my god. Lord have mercy. He's too busy playing in his band. <laughs> he has a band. Yeah. Yeah. He has a band. He 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 he's so like narcissistic. He opens up. For people at Madison Square Garden. Oh, was it was clearly that's Michael Jordan's problem <laughs> because Michael Jordan didn't have a band. He's worse. Yeah. He's worse on him. He's worse on him. You know. He doesn't show empathy. All right. So, <laughs> my shout outs, man. Um, shout out to my brother, man. My boy Travis Kearns, man. Um, saw him, saw him last night, man, and uh, he was like, man, I'm y'all biggest fan, man. He was like, y'all got to keep this up. I, I, I sound like a broken record, but every single time people come up to me in public and say these type of things, it always means something every single time, man. So anytime that happens, I got to shout people out when they do that to us, man. Um, happy birthday and shout out to Brandon Risher, who was our Be very rich. first guest on Under Construction. So again, man, happy birthday, man. We, we, we will definitely have you back at some point, man. Uh, enjoy your birthday. You're getting old, man. You're almost there. That landmark next year, buddy. Um, Your landmark this year. Yeah, nah, we ain't going to talk about that. Um, (laughs) uh, Shout out again uh, to the Winston-Salem State Rams. (laughs) 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 I'm already passing landmark. Shout shout out to the Winston-Salem State Rams once again, man. Congratulations on the CIAA tournament. Shout out to the city of Charlotte. I didn't hear a hiccup. I ain't hear nothing, a hitch. Nothing. From CIAA. Oh, I could be on, wrong. Man, come oh, on. man. I did. Oh, man. I thought we was in but the clear. But it was small, but let's go. Let's just, let's Look, let's if it was small, we going to we – let's roll with it, man. However, congratulations on a mostly successful CIAA weekend. I hope everybody had a good time. I hope you didn't spend all your money. I hope you still got some of your tax refunds. No, nope. <laughs> them rented Bentleys are expensive. Oh, y'all turning them back in today? They gotta go back today. Yeah, y'all getting them extra they fees? They gotta go back today. Today, and do not, don't wait till tomorrow to take them cars back. What's the tax refund check? I haven't seen one of those nobody did yet. So that was my shout outs for the week, man. Um, speaking of Brandon Richard, I'm gonna give a shout out to him. He was on the uh, Panthers uh, mental health in the black community panel uh, no this doubt, past man. week. Uh, shout out for the continued good work that you're doing in the community. Uh, I got a shout at uh, David David Tepper uh, for possibly having PSLs for the MLS team. Uh, people are not feeling that. <laughs> <laughs> if if they were built to, if they were to build a new stadium, I'd be okay with PSLs. But to charge people PSLs for, for an existing stadium yeah. is not that. Hey man, but you got a nice seat at the uh, bunker suites coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just just a shout out to Tonex and 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 everybody for CIAA. Yeah, I man. had a good awesome time last night. Uh, laid back, no drama, uh, just a good time. It's kind of sad that it's ending in Charlotte. It's it's like we're losing all of our African American cultural events here. Yeah, we'll be back. It's pretty bland here now. And hey, I heard the Freaknik's coming back. We still got breweries. I think we do. We own a brewery. I'm sorry. We we did one. A lot of people don't drink craft yeah, beer. Drink craft beer <laughs> except me and Kaiser. It's, yeah. It's, <laughs> and even then, I'm kind of like yeah. beer snobs. We, I am. I'll tell you, I'm a beer snob. And then continue to shout out to. Uh, African Americans. It was a good Black History Month, uh, except for <laughs> except for a lot of the sh- <laughs> lot of the stuff. That uh, let's let's see, uh, Oprah, <laughs> Gail, Deontay Wilder. There was a it was a oh, rough it was a dude. it was a rough. One. Oh, we made it though. Oh, we shout made. out to the ghost of Michael Jackson and Kobe uh, for, <laughs> for tripping Oprah. For tripping last Oprah. <laughs> yes, and uh, that's our show. That's uh, that was the first <laughs> this week. We gonna get in trouble this yeah, week, man. Yeah. Yeah, but it's all good because it's totally worth it. We do it for you guys. Love so, y'all, um, man. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'm going home. Give me some sleep. Yes, I feel you there. Uh, yes. We'll see you guys next week. Take care of yourselves and each other. Horn is going to pull out a miracle today. That's right. <laughs>